The year is 2020, and life on planet Earth has never been quite so strange. In a move of calculated defense, the Homo sapiens sequester themselves within their enclosures while the virus that will soon be forgotten lays waste to life's social fabric. But while the unsuspecting sleep, one species is as active as ever. Their identifying features are many. From the long fingernails ideal for warding off predatory attempts, to the curled lashes, heavy perfume, and open cleavage, all traps designed to entice their prey and develop a following. For such a finely tuned beast, lighting and post-production are key, and like many of Earth's more aggressive species, and they must hunt to survive. But while they flog skincare products and custom water bottles, they are constantly on the lookout for habitat invaders sliding their way optimistically into their DMs, only to be left on red for all of eternity. Oh no, my cover is blown. The influencers of Instagram have spotted me lurking in their natural domain, at David Attenborough. I think quickly to explain myself. I'm here because the planet is in danger. Oh yes, yes, they seem to have bought that. I'm in the clear, as it were. Phew. That was close. So, what's the real reason I'm on Instagram? Well, it, it's quite simple, really. <laughs> I want to be a sugar daddy. Good evening and welcome to The Forecast, the show where we bring you news before it happens. I'm Jack Carney. Tonight we're predicting that too much information will be divulged in the confessional as churches usher in the faithful. Mental health professionals will struggle to keep their minds on the job as bad things continue to happen to good people. And the Oracle gives us a little sneak peek at some of the questions he's going to be asking the US presidential candidates ahead of a shock third debate. But first, before we dive too deeply into the week that will be, let's revisit all we got wrong in the week that was with the Retractions. The Retractions! I'm joined by the forecast's resident fact checker, Professor Cornelius Winterspoon from the University of Technology, Sydney. Oh, you've got foam, Jack. You've got wet hot foam. What did we get wrong last week, Cornelius? Oh, where to begin, Jack? Firstly, you and your news team ran a story claiming that a Mr. Wood would take aim at Rupert Murdoch and his media empire. Yes, in an aim to diversify the share of media ownership in, in the country. Yes, yes, yes. And your factual issue with that story is? Well, Jack, it's complete nonsense, as I highlighted in my Daily Telegraph article this morning. Cornelius, surely even you as a News Limited employee can admit that one family having so much political persuasion, that's a daunting prospect. Oh, I don't doubt that it is, Jack. My concern is more you dragging Paul Wood's name through the mud just to get your point across. Uh, I see what's happened here. You ran a story on the same day claiming that New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian... Sorry, Jack, I have trouble saying that name. Because it's a, it's a tongue twister. Well, no, I just don't like forwardness very much. Anywho, you claimed that the Premier had been involved in a raunchy... I don't think we said raunchy. ...sexually intense... We definitely didn't say sexually intense. ...relationship with disgraced Liberal MP Daryl Maguire. Let me guess, you've confused Daryl Maguire with the president of the Collingwood Magpies and host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I think you're thinking of Lizzie Maguire, Jack. What? Well, no, Jack, my only issue from a fact-checker's perspective is, where's the evidence? Well, 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 she testified in front of the Independent Commission Against Corruption. Well, no, Jack, I mean real evidence. Explicit letters, lewd photographs, pixelated home videos, perhaps. Why would the public need access to that sort of stuff? Just something for a rainy day, Jack. Ah, oh, bring the band in. I'm hot just like an oven, and I need some loving, and loving now. And when I get that feeling, I want sexual healing. Sexual healing is something that's good for me. Two 
tonight's leading story and what a year it's been for the faithful with religious institutions deemed as essential as their tax contributions are existent. But while the confessional's been closed, the sinning, well, that hasn't taken a backwards step. Now, we're predicting that the local priest could be in for a rude shock as he discovers in great detail what his parishioners have been up to. Yes, my son? Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been some months now since I last came to confession, and in that time I've built up a bit of a sin catalogue, if you will. Take your time. Last month I stole $100 out of my mother's purse. She didn't realise, so I guess I got away with it. Mm, now look, theft is of course a sin, but if we can show remorse before the Lord... I used that money to buy a premium porn subscription. Uh... I couldn't settle on all the options. There's just so many considerations. I mean category for one thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big interracial fan, but uh, I've been getting that. into midget stuff recently, so yes, that's not... I opted for Brazzers and Brazzers Plus. Oh, all right, that's that's more information than the Lord requires. Now it's on my mind constantly. Chronically masturbating three, sometimes four times a day. I've put the disabled toilet at work out of order twice already. Th th that's enough! Look, we'll call it three Hail Marys uh, and an Our Father. Now, if there's nothing else... Just the one thing, Father. A year ago, I, I cheated on my wife. It was an arranged marriage, first cousins. But that doesn't excuse my actions. Now listen, adultery is a terrible sin, my son. But if you are willing to repent... It started with a handful of arguments. Petty stuff. It wasn't long before I got the wandering eye, flirting with Miranda from work. You know how it is. We ended up going at it behind the vending machines at the work Christmas party. Uh, again, I don't need the details. I mean, I felt guilty at first, but... I won't lie to you, Father. I love the thrill. Now I do coke at the Ivy most weeks with different escorts and I just let them tie me up and do whatever they want to me. Okay, 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 listen, look, we're, we're gonna call it three Our Fathers, three Hail Marys, and a full rosary. Now, you do own a set of rosary beads, don't you? Uh, I mean, I own a set of anal beads. That's clearly not the same thing, look. Look, if there's nothing else... Well, there is just the one other thing. Uh, what is it? Yesterday I... Well, I wouldn't call it murdered. With, with the right lawyer, it's probably accidental homicide at worst. But I was texting while driving. Snapchatting, actually. When I came to the roundabout, mounted the curb and bowled over a young Sri Lankan family. The parents were both killed instantly, as were their daughters. Write-offs. There was a young boy with them too. Their son, I suppose. And, and, and is the boy, is, is he all right? Why would that be any concern of yours? Well, uh, 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 I just wondered if he... You've got some sick problems. Perv. We're going to cross live now to Brisbane, where the Oracle is standing by with an update on the NRL's latest sex scandal. That's right, Jack. I'm here outside the Brisbane Magistrates Court where the teenager convicted of releasing a revenge porn tape of herself and Bronco Starker Tony Staggs is set to appeal the decision after she's been charged with illegally distributing the raunchy footage. Mackenzie Robinson pleaded guilty to the charge as it's been alleged she released the tape without Staggs' consent after the rugby league star denied her request for a threesome. Staggs was cleared of any wrongdoing by the NRL's integrity unit shortly after the video was released. I apprehended Mackenzie en route to the courtroom earlier. Why did you refer to Katoni as daddy in the tape? Are you related in some way? Was a threesome a two girl one guy thing or it was going to be a devil's three way? Was Anthony Seabold the third man? Do you think Kevy Walters can get the boys back to playing their best footy in 2021? Or was Paul Green the more logical choice? It's one of the better stories to come out of the NRL this season. A player, while embarrassed, really did nothing wrong. Stag's only real crime, his love knew no limits. And with the off-season just around the corner, tabloid journos are already licking their lips, ready for the real fun to begin. Back to you in the studio, Jack. Well, to health now, and certain media outlets are predicting as many as three in four Australians have suffered pandemic-related mental health issues, or PRMHI for short. Now, we're predicting it won't be long before the increased demand for psychological services will start to take its toll on practitioners. Right? A little thing, but it looked vicious. It had huge, ma massive teeth. And I was, what am I going to do to that? I can't kick it off. God, he can talk, this bloke. Does he ever shut up? Me, me, me. Me? Is it? Uh, is what you? The problem, Doc. 
it's been hanging over my head for ages, and Therese and I can't move past it. We we can't even sit down for dinner together. Dinner? That sounds nice. I don't remember the last time I ate a square meal. Mmm, Szechuan pork and green beans with a side of rice. Mmm. Oh, yeah. No, you don't understand what was at stake. Steak. That'll do. Medium rare, mushroom sauce. Risky, though. Some places do a runny mushy. She says, Tom, you're crazy. Gravy? Well, that is sometimes the safer bet. Yeah, yeah, and I see her point, Doc. But you know what they say about every story? Two sides. Chips and salad. And she says, try again, love. Mash and veg. Here's my side. I came home after work. There's a dog at the gate. Dog? Hot dog. Big, gnarly German shepherd. Right? German. Ooh, Kransky. And he just goes off. And I'll tell you, there was no stopping. Topping? Onion, you naughty boy. Everyone starts running and... I get that horrible feeling that I've forgotten something. Mustard? No, that's not it. And I turn around and I see my daughter and she's lagging behind. We had forgotten all about her. And I turn around and I scream. Getcha! Yeah. How did you know? Oh, I'm just really good at my job. Wow. Sauerkraut. What? That's what I was forgetting. I think he's on to me. After two markedly different debates, the entertainment portion of the US presidential election is sadly over. Or so you thought. I'm pleased to announce that a shock third debate has been scheduled for early next week. The moderator of this debate? One of our very own, The Oracle. Now we do have a lot to get through, so let's get started. This first question goes to Vice President Biden. Now with everything that's going on throughout America, the protesting, rioting and looting, what is your current stance on law enforcement? What I support is the police having the opportunity to deal with the problems they face. He has no law enforcement That's support. not true. Almost That's nothing. Not, that, look. Oh, Roy, who do you have? Name one group that supports you. Name one group that came out and supported you. Go look, ahead. Look, Think. We have time. We don't have time to Joe, do no, no, I hope you don't mind if I call you, Joe, but we've, we've just started, so there's plenty of time. <coughs> nothing? Should we move on? Or... Now, President Trump, Stormy Daniels, the adult film star, has alleged in her new tell-all book, you're quite a handful in bed, and that you pulled off the dirty Sanchez on more than one occasion. Now, he doesn't know how to do that. He has, You'd you be know, surprised. You, you pick You'd be surprised. the Go wrong ahead, guy, the wrong Go night at the wrong time. Listen. <laughs> Guys, let's keep the locker room chat to a minimum. Joe, as you're aware, President Trump contracted the coronavirus recently. One person is too much. It's China's Listen, Trump, fault. It should have never happened. Let me finish. He made a miraculous recovery in less than a week. Do you believe that the American people trust President Trump on COVID-19? Two minutes, uninterrupted. They're going to be this delivering is the same president. Man it's all told set up. You by Easter, this had be gone away. By the warm weather, it'd be gone. Miraculous, like a miracle. And by the way, maybe you could inject some bleach in your arm and that would take care of it. This is the that same man. That was said sarcastically, that was you same, know that. I, that I, was said sarcastically. And so here's the deal. President Trump, whether you think it was sarcasm or not, like I'm, I'm an educated man. I went to uh, um, Delaware State. Oh, sorry, I forgot for a second. But you can at least acknowledge that wasn't a smart thing to say. Did you use the word smart? Uh, so you said you went to Delaware State, but you forgot the name of your college. President, my, my parents <laughs> went to Delaware program. State. You graduated either the lowest or almost the lowest in your class. Don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. My mother's actually in the audience. Because you know what? There's nothing okay, smart about you. this is getting a bit you. personal. It's not about me. Let's move on to another question. Vice President Biden, an industry that's been left off and neglected from stimulus packages is sex workers and the prostitution industry. Do you have a plan for this industry and getting them back on their feet? What the plan is, you've got to provide these businesses the ability to have the money to be able to reopen with the PPE as well as with the sanitation they need. You have to provide Tell that them to plastic. Nancy Pelosi. They're, they're, well, he's just shush for a minute. Mr. President, your, your administration agreed to the time limits. Vice President, you have two minutes. You should get out of your bunker and get out of the sand trap and get in, in your golf course and go in the what? Oval Office and bring together the Democrats and Republicans and fund what needs to be done now to save lives. Okay, you've, you've lost me there. I think you got a bit sidetracked. Vice President Biden, I have to ask, do you suffer from early onset dementia? Totally discredited. And Are you a danger way, to women? 
totally discredited. Well, I don't think it's been totally discredited. There have been some reports. They call you a super predator. President Trump, I'm aware of the crude nicknames. Now, this question's open to the floor. President Trump, Joe, should the American people be concerned about your controversial family lives? Here's the deal. We want to talk about families and ethics. I don't want to do that. I mean, his family, we could talk the about all The mayor of Moscow's wife gave your son three and a half million dollars. What did he true. do to deserve it? That what is, did he okay, do let's just wrap it up there. This is obviously getting a little bit out of hand. You're both carrying on like children. This debate achieves nothing, services no one, and the winner of this debate is nobody. America, good luck. The country's biggest racing event is just around the corner, and while crowds are still a big no-no in Australia's virus capital, one of the stalwarts of the Melbourne Cup landscape will not be deterred. G'day, my name is Tony. I am the hat maker for the Melbourne Cup, or milliner, if you will. Each year I make an vicinity of six to 800 hats and fascinators for the lovely ladies on race day. Obviously this year is a little bit different due to COVID and no crowds. So what we've had to do is pivot and we've come up with the idea of hats for horses. This is a bespoke line of headdress and headwear uh, made exclusively for the race runners themselves. Each horse is different. Uh, we don't like to generalize, but we do find that the trainers will pick a style and design for their runners based on where they originated from. Well, you got your Irish horses, you got your homegrown Aussie horses, you got your French horses, your Arab horses, your Israeli horses, your Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese horses. Of course, they look more or less the same. Your Kiwi horses. And finally, you've got your Native American Indian horses. We like to find a product that's going to make our customer feel and look their best and most confident come race day. Each horse comes in for an initial fitting, which can take up to an hour, depending on the circumference of the head. Next, we sit down one-on-one -on -one with the horse and go through the different design options available, the various styles, materials, cuts, and whatnot. Uh, and then it's over to the workshop, and that's, uh, that's where we make the magic happen. Looks good on you there, mate. You like that? Yeah, well, why the long face? That's, uh... It's just a little bit of horse humor, that. How many have you sold? How many have I sold? Um, uh, well, well, none for the moment. Minus one. to a breaking prediction now and the Oracle is live in Canberra with some alarming foresight. That's right Jack, I'm here outside of Parliament House where the PM will call an emergency cabinet meeting in a matter of moments. There's no information at this stage as to what the meeting will entail, but I'm being told that the subject matter is extremely serious. Thanks for coming everyone. I don't usually like to call emergency cabinet meetings this late on a Friday afternoon, but the situation is out of our control. Health Minister. Do you have an update for us on what the hell is going on? I do, Prime Minister. The total number of cases at this point is unknown, but we're estimating it's around 600. My God. The virus only appears to have one symptom. Explosive diarrhea. Well, I cannot stress this enough. If anyone has any of the symptoms... Just, just the one. Please, stay home. Never mind the casualty numbers. Have we given any thought as to what this might mean for the economy? Scalpers are buying up toilet paper by the pallet. They're making a killing. God damn those bastards. Prime Minister, we've just had confirmation from the contact tracing unit. All known cases can be linked to nine popular Sydney-based restaurants. Bingo. We blacklist the restaurants. Name and shame, problem solved. Perfect. Let's hear the names, son. Ranjit's International House of Curry, Anil's Southern Indian Dining, Mumbai for now, Aji Baji, The Chronicles of Narnia, Deepak's Hormacopia, the Joe Rogan Josh experience, Cutty 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 Hot Hot Hot, and 
Pandeep's Papadam Emporium. Should we, uh, you know? Nah, we can't. I mean, it could be a coincidence. Seems unlikely. Maybe if we phrased it super tastefully. Yeah, 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 I guess we could put a positive spin on it. Oh, oh, are you serious, man? Come on. Come on. A cricket gag? Really? Or we could just let this one go through to the caper. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop, stop. That's it. Right. I don't know, guys, this whole thing doesn't smell right to me. How do we know for sure it's nine restaurants? Yeah, that is very specific. How do we know it's not seven or eleven? Taxi! That's enough. Prime Minister, what do you think? I think... I think I'm back on the samosas. We're all gonna die! <laughs> Taxi. Oh, I just got that. Well, it's a funny old time to travel. With so much uncertainty around border access, changing social protocols, and just plain old dubious hygiene standards. But none of that could stop our resident tourists from boarding a plane and visiting a much maligned city in this week's episode of the Oracle Abroad. That's right, Jack, I'm here in Pyongyang, one of the most beautiful misunderstood cities in all of the world, victim to copious amounts of misinformation. I'm here today to show viewers that this is a bustling metropolis, home to so much good. Come take a look with me through this beautiful COVID safe town. Come on, let's have a look. Enjoy a, a local massage. Fresh fruit and veg. Vibrant, a humming marketplace for locals and tourists. Come on, let's go inside. Beauty salons. It's not a bad price for lip and brow. High-end fashion. I love a bargain. And a wide range of cheaply imitated products. Advanced medicine and pharmaceuticals. That explains why they all live to 100. So Tom, what brings you to this vibrant town? Uh, I come here for shopping. You do shopping around here because so many shopping here and eat a lot of different restaurants. I'm here with Park Si Sung. Park, has Pyongyang moved on since the virus? Yeah, we've moved on. Your people actually speak such really good English around here. It's excellent. It's really refreshing. Kim Jong does get a, a bad beat up. Do you believe all the rumours that he sows his ass? Pardon? That, that Kim Jong Un doesn't have any bowel movements. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, and I, I, I believe some of the conspiracies. Yeah, because there is Dictator Dan in Melbourne. What are your thoughts on Dictator Kim Jong? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. I think he's a uh, world apart from us. Yeah. That's a great move. And you talk about a sense of community. What are we playing here? Uh, Chinese chess. He's too quick, he's too quick for you. Chinese chess. You wouldn't read about it. That's a coward play. Oh, f Is Katy Perry's Firework his favourite song still? No? It might not have the glitz and glamour of New York City or the beaches of Madrid, but there's something special about this modern utopia that is Pyongyang. It seems to have moved on without the virus, and it really makes you wonder. You can't believe everything you read, see, and hear in the mainstream media. That's all I've got time for, Jack. Over to you in the studio. I'm gonna go and get something to eat. Well, it's time for the weather, and this week, I'm excited to welcome back a familiar face. It's Tim Bailey, ladies and gentlemen. Sandra, this is a f***ing Mickey Mouse production, this one. Uh, Timmy, we, we can hear you, mate, you there? Well, we Jack, am I excited to be here or what? I'll tell you what, after all these years, technical difficulties are still a thing with the bales, aren't they? <laughs> Thanks so much for being here, Timmy. I understand you've had a, a tough time of it recently. I have, Jack. It's an absolute pleasure to be here, I must add. Uh, but I have had a tough time. Uh, after my recent uh, step down from Channel 10, it's been, uh, it's been tough. And it's, uh, it's just really great. You guys have thrown me a lifeline. So the Bales is eternally grateful for that. Oh, that's, that's I was thinking about ending it all, Jack. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, it's a little dark for air, Tim. No, my, my career, of course. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant, you Yeah, know. yeah. And my life, Jack. I was, uh, <laughs> I was ready to hang. 
we're back. Still with Tim Bailey here, a man who's a bit of an icon and uh, plenty of experience on his side thanks to his time at Network 10. Now with us. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you must have spoken to uh, some of my references at Channel 10. Uh, what are those cheeky devils saying about me? Uh, they're not um, They're not stoked with you, actually, Tim. A couple of comments you made uh, about Waleed Ali on radio a few months back have come to light and... Uh, all, I've, I've said it from day dot. Since I met Wallet in the in the lunchroom, right? I was eating a ham sandwich as well, right? He's a pompous little know-it-all m- dog. I've always said it. The other thing about him, right? And I've noticed it, and no one else has really noticed it. He bloody stinks. He absolutely stinks like a f-ing little. S- I don't know if deodorant has been invented over there out of absolute spite. I'm going to go home, I'm going to get some really nice pork, right? I'm going to get some really nice pork, I'm going to turn the oven up to 200 degrees, and I'm going to put Waleed Ali's head in there. Yeah, Jack, um, I don't want to call you a snowflake or anything, but I didn't see the issue in that. All of it was out of context, and you know what? I will bet my left and right kahuna that if I was to show Waleed that, He'd get along with it. He'd know. It's a personal joke, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Timmy, the, the producers have just informed me, mate, that uh, Waleed's actually just made an official response to those comments on the project. Let's, uh, let's take a listen to those. I'm gutted and I'm scared and I feel overcome with utter hopelessness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack, Waleed has such a dry sense of humour. In fact, they all do. It's, it's a cultural thing. Well, a, a, a cultural thing amongst Muslims? No, no, Jack. Newsreaders. It's a cultural thing amongst newsreaders. They've got a very dry sense of humour. Right. Uh, so- sorry about that, Tim. Now, I've got a letter here from a fan. Uh, she's written in. Her name is Sophie. And she says, Hi, Tim. I'm nine. And when I grow up, I want to be a weather presenter just like you. You always talk about how the weather feels like 32 degrees when it's only 28. What does this mean? And who is the feels like guy. Maybe you can tell Sophie what the uh, the feels like guy's name is, Tim. Oh, his name is actually uh, Nanya. Nanya, it's Indian. Nanya f- business, Jack. Okay, right? If I go outside what, what and I say the weather after 28 years of on-the-job experience, Daily Bailey Energy is 32 degrees, it's 32 f- degrees, mate. Okay. Right. right? Take your thermometer and shove it up your ass and tell me the temperature that it feels like to you. Okay? Yeah. Right, I should have just f***ing killed myself. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Tim Bailey. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. It's time for sport, and the winter season is all but done. And while most punters will transition smoothly into tennis, cricket, and arguing with Nup to the Cuppers on Instagram, let's spare a thought for those winter tragics like our commentators, Andrew, the Fever Febster. He'll be keeping sharp around the forecast offices in ways most infuriating. There were plenty who thought these two wouldn't make it this far, and yet here they stand before us. The product of unparalleled effort, discipline, and gamesmanship. But who will prevail? Man or sandwich? Oh, and it's man who makes the first move! Who would have thought after last week's bout of gastro? Six again! Who would have thought? Andrew, you're killing me, mate. That's, that's not the rules of the game. You can't just look at my cards. He strikes it! He likes oh! it! Right online, but he just hasn't got the length. I'm sick of this creep. Always invasion my price. One word, nine letters, composure. Even on his break, that's what experience brings. Mm. Listen to him. You can even hear the heartbeat he's that relaxed. Mm. Sensational. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Get out. Get out. What is this? Pervert? All this talk of gastro has me in the mood for food. It's takeaway night tonight at my house, and if you want to know what I'll be eating, well, that's none of your business. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the forecast.
forgive me if this is propaganda, but do they tell you Dennis Rodman's the greatest basketball? <coughs> oh, f off. F this. No, take it off. I'm done. No, I'm not working with these. F it's coughing everywhere. It's disgusting.